Good morning. Welcome to WOS. How is everyone? Good. <laughs> that's good. Um, I'd like to pray again, if that's all right. Um, dear God, uh, thank you for this awesome opportunity where I can share um, your love and what you do for us. Um, I pray that you will speak through me and calm my nerves and um, just be with us. Amen. I would like to take the time now to introduce myself. My name is Kobe Johnson and I'm the second youngest child of a family of five. I'm 17 and I'm in my final year of school, hopefully. <laughs> I've been given the opportunity to share with you about a topic that I will introduce in a bit. But first, I'm going to talk about the theme for this week. The theme for WOS 2020 is Mythbusters. Who has seen the show Mythbusters? Okay, for those of you who haven't, it's about these people who take myths and stories that have been handed down over the years and test them scientifically, whether or not it could have possibly happened. And so the idea behind this theme is to bust, is to bust myths about false perceptions of God. We all hold ideas, uh, we all hold on to ideas about God. Are they actually true? What is God really like? One of the most common ideas about God is that people struggle with, that, uh, God that people struggle with is the idea that God is a harsh judge waiting for us to make a mistake. So in this talk, I hope to bust the myth that God is a harsh judge and decides our fate based on the wrong things we have done. So why do people think God is a harsh judge? Where does this idea even come from? Well, people think this because God created a set of rules that none of us uh, can keep. And when he judges us based on those, uh, and he judges us based on those rules. This is completely unfair. How can we ever be saved? If, if this is the case, we may as well give up now. Or does God have a better plan? A plan that we haven't understood before. One that makes sense. One that is fair. I'm going to present to you a statement that might not sit well with you to begin with, but as we further explore it later, it might make a bit more sense to you. The statement is this. God is not fair. I'm going, oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you a story that relates to this statement, and hopefully you will start to understand the meaning behind it. The story goes like this. So my dad recently had an employee who filed a work cover claim so that he could be paid for an injury that happened at work. He said that he injured his back by lifting, bending, and twisting while he was working on the steel, and these actions caused a severe and permanent injury to his back preventing him from ever working in the same job again. This claim was filed on a Tuesday. However, on the Sunday, two days before, this employee was playing first grade cricket at Palm Beach. He had to leave the game early because he hurt his back while batting. Dad knew this because the employee phoned up the workshop manager on the Monday after the game, saying he could not come to work because he hurt his back playing cricket the day before. So Dad thought he had a very good case to win in favour of himself and he rejected the claim. The employee decided to take the case to court and sue Dad for his injury. So the question is, did this employee injure his back at work or at the game of cricket? The judge considered all the facts and circumstances presented by the defence and prosecution lawyers. These are the facts. The employee had a permanent injury that prevents him from doing his job and the employee has injured his back playing cricket. Shouldn't these facts decide the, uh, decide the case against the employee? But here are the circumstances. The employee has a family with two young children. The employee can no longer do his job and earn an income and the employee has a home loan. The employee was also lifting, bending and twisting at work. The judge decided he could have injured his back doing his job and awarded him a considerable payment 
so that he could care for his family and pay his home loan. Is this the judge you would like if you were the employee? God considers the facts, but he also considers our circumstances. God is looking for every reason to judge or rule in your favour. Your, your case cost the life of God's son, and he is fighting for you. I have a quote from Ty Gibson. Ty is a teacher at Arise and stayed in our home for the past month. This is what he says. God would rather die in eternal death, uh, would rather die in eternal death than to live without you. Let me say it again. God would rather die an eternal death than to live without you. Well, let me put it another way. As my brother once said, Jesus' heart wasn't hardened when he was in the most intense physical and spiritual pain, but rather softened, and he was more concerned about our salvation than his own existence. God was more concerned about our salvation than his own, his own existence. Just let that sink in for a moment. This explains why God is fighting for you with all that he has, and he has plenty to fight with. We could not wish for a better judge and defense lawyer. Satan is our accuser and God is our judge and defender. This is what Satan says. You are guilty, God set the rules, and you broke them. You deserve death. But when we choose God to be our judge, he looks at us, and all he sees is Jesus, perfection. He says, I choose to pardon you because of Jesus. God is defending us with everything he has. And we know that he is defending us because he gave up his son so that we could have the chance to be saved. So if God is our defendant and he is our judge to de determining our case, then God is not fair. But get this, he is not fair, but in our favor. This reason for us to have hope, this is reason for us to have hope. In fact, if we choose God, he will rule in our favour, and his plan of salvation cannot fail. The victory for our salvation was won at the cross. Satan was defeated. He lost our case, and God has won it. Imagine this, though. You have been accused by someone of doing something wrong, and you have a court date to rock up to. You get your lawyer, and the day comes for your court case. You get into the courtroom, and you look over, and you can see the man that is accusing you of the wrong. You then look up, and the judge hasn't arrived yet. You wait a little while, and then the court meeting begins, but still, the judge hasn't arrived. You both show your cases, and when all is done, your own defending lawyer stands up, walks to the judgment seat, and determines the case. You're free to go. The verdict is in your favor. This is what God does for us. He, just, he stands beside us in the judgment, and then when all is said and done, he stands up and sets us free, because he is our judge. So we started out by saying that God is judge and judges us based on what we have done and we have all done wrong. Therefore, aren't we condemned? Definitely not. How can God do this? God has the right to judge us unfairly because Jesus died an un unfair death in our place. There's a Bible verse found in Romans 6.23. It says this, for the wages of sin is death. And I'll read the rest later. We have sinned and deserve death. That is fair. Jesus has not sinned and does not deserve death. Can you see what God has done? He has turned the tables in our favor. 
This is good news. This is the best news you could ever have. There is no better news. The rest of the Bible verse, Romans 6.23, says this. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now that we know how God judges us, how should we judge others? Or if I put it a different way, how do you want others to judge you? There's a saying that goes like this. You can't understand someone until you have walked a mile in their shoes. It means that we understand very few people because we haven't had their circumstances and yet we are quite quick to judge them unfairly. Here is a Bible verse found in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 2. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. This is telling us that firstly, we should avoid judging others. And secondly, if you judge someone else, God will judge you the same way. Yes, I'm guilty of judging others. And I would not want God to judge me the same way. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Since we are all in this together, what are we going to do about it? Look to Jesus and his goodness, and not to those around us who make the same mistakes we all make. Jesus is our example. He will never let us down. And yes, God has a plan, a very good plan. One of the biggest differences between a judge of today and Jesus as judge is this. God has walked with us our whole life, looking out for us, even if we still choose to do the wrong things. I'm going to share an illustration with you. The illustration is called the footprint illustration. It starts with a man nearing the end of his life, looking back upon it. He has, he has had an up and down life. He has gone through many things. Some were happy times and others really dark and difficult times. As he thought about it, he imagined his life as if he was walking along a beach. As he was at the end of his uh, walk along the beach, he looked back at his footprints as if to look back at his life. He noticed that in the good times, he had two sets of footprints. But in the tough times, there was only one set of footprints. Most of the time, he could see God there with him. But there seemed to be times where God's footprints couldn't be seen next to him during the hard times anymore. He was confused as to why this was. So he asked God why there were two set of footprints in the good times and only one set of footprints in the tough times. God explained to the man and said, in the, in the good times, we walk together. But in the tough times, it was my footprints and I was carrying you through. I had not gone anywhere. Through this, we can see that God was and is with us our whole lives. He is with us in the good times, helping us through the tough times and carrying us through it all. This made me realize that we are not in the right place to judge one another because we are not walking with them through everything and we do not know everything that they are going through. Unlike us, God is with all of us through all of our lives. He knows every situation and judges us with him by our side. So when we judge others, we don't look Christ-like and we don't represent God correctly. Throughout history, Christians have represented God incorrectly to the world by being way too judgmental and exclusive. Let me give you a personal example of a time when I judged others, one that I'm not proud of. At a previous woes, I judged certain people for taking a worse talk. I placed a judgment on them thinking that they were not the right person to be speaking about God. But I soon realized that through their talk, um, that they were in actual fact far more worthy than I was. None of us are worthy to speak about God. I'm not worthy to speak about God. But because of what Jesus has done and is doing in our lives, how can we not speak of him and everything he has done? Through this experience, I understood that judging people only hurts myself 
others, and ultimately God. God has been teaching me to see people not as their labels, cheater, liar, loner, loner, show off, gossiper, the list goes on, but rather the way God judges them and sees them, a child of God. In the end, I've decided to leave the judging completely up to God because when we, um, because we are not in the right place to judge. God is able to judge us because he is perfect and good. If you are wondering what God is thinking about you because all of these things you've done in your life, remember that God sees you as his child. You don't need to be afraid of him. He's on your side. As we can see, God is not fair, but in our favour. God isn't a harsh judge. That myth is busted. The wages of sin is death. That is the law that God placed in the universe. He doesn't just scrap that law or delete the punishment. No, he took the punishment. He experienced death himself, and when he judges us, he sees the perfection of Jesus, and we're forgiven and free. God sees everyone as important and that everyone has potential. He is slowly but surely showing me how to see everyone through his eyes. I'm not there yet, but God is patient and I am willing and determined. I want to dare you to be a little less judgmental and see others in a new way.